my side, everybody. Good to see you all. Good morning. In my country, you greet somebody back when they greet you, but don't worry. I'm now in America. That's maybe not the way you do things, but where I come from, when somebody says good morning, you say back good morning. Oh, thank you, Bob. Good morning to you, dear. I'm just kidding with you. Everybody good? Yes. Yes. All right. So uh, last week we started to talk about the vision of Rhythm of Grace Church. And the vision is in short, in four steps, we want to help you to live the life you've always wanted to live. And you may be asking, well, how do I know what's the life you've always wanted to live? It's kind of the life we all desire. It's a life where, uh, we put it in four easy steps, it's a life where you Uh, First of all, get to know God. Every human being has this desire inside of him. Where did I come from? (laughs) Who made me? Am I just an accident between my mom and dad? One night, you know, in a drive... No, okay, let's stop there. Um, Am I just an accident? Who made me? Why was I made? Why am I here? We all live with that question. And I want to get back to the creator, the one who made me. I want to know God. Second desire of every person, I want to find freedom. It's inside of you. You want to be healed of your issues, your baggage, the hurts, the stuff people did to you, the stuff your house, your family, the stuff the school, parents, call it you, you. You want to live freely. Come on, people. You want to be light, okay? You want to go through life with no baggage and pain and issues and always when you get one step ahead, you fall two steps behind because you always screw things up because of the hurts that happen. We all want to get healed, That's the desire of every person. Thirdly, you want to discover yourself. You want to know yourself better. Just just before the service, I had a conversation with a young gentleman and said, I'm learning so much about myself. That's a never-ending process in our lives. (laughs) I want to understand why do I act the way I act. Why did I say that stupid thing to my wife and she's mad at me again? I want to know, okay? Because it happens every second day. I don't know. I, I want to understand myself. I want to discover why, I, why am I different than you? Have you figured that out? I do things different than you. Not one is right and not one is wrong. Both is right, but it's different. Why? It's the way God wired me. It's the way he put me together. It's the way he designed me. And I want to understand that. I want to discover myself. And fourthly, we all have this desire to make a difference. That's inside of every human being. I want to make a difference. My life must count. I, I just don't want to get into life, get born, live life, and then do the rat race and die the biggest rat in life. I don't want to do that, okay? I, I want to live this life and somewhere in between, I don't want to be a rat. I want to be who God called me to be and then live with purpose and meaning. And the day I die, I want to say, I lived a great life. This was an amazing time on earth that God gave me. So that's the four desires and it's inside of all of us. And, and we've got four steps designed to help you to know God, find freedom, discover yourself, and to make a difference. And that's what we're going to try to teach you here at Rhythm of Grace. So we, we've changed it a little bit just to play with words. And we said we all desire to be loved and to love. That's part of all of it. We want to be loved by God, and then we want to love ourselves and love our communities. So we said 
We want to move people, the, each letter of the word love means something. The first one is lost. We want to move people from lost to open, from open to volunteer, volunteer their time to grow, from volunteer to grow, to engage in a world, engage in themselves, and from engage to making a difference. So this is part of it. just the four steps in other words. Then we said, how do we move people from lost to open? We bless them. Remember that? You are a blessing to bless other people. So blessing just means we begin to pray for people by name. Don't raise your hands. Did anybody start doing this this week? Okay, some hands went up. You didn't have to raise it. Thank you for that. But I, my list is getting a bit long, okay? Because I try to pray for everybody. Yesterday I've met two gentlemen, Dwayne and Mike. I've already prayed for them this morning. Now, I'm not a super saint giant. Don't you ever think that. I'm just a normal human being who wants to bless other people. And I pray for them by name. Because why did I meet them? Maybe God's up to something. Maybe if it's God's will and we do it all right and all is going good, one day I'll introduce you to Mike. And all of you will know. Oh, was that the mic you were praying for? Yes. <laughs> don't tell him, okay? When you meet Dwayne and his wife, don't tell him I was praying for them even before they knew it, all right? So begin to pray for people by name. Listen to their stories. I can tell you by, about Mike and Dwayne's story. Eat and engage with them. Try to mingle, spend time with them. Serve and support them in their needs. Look for an opportunity to support and serve them. So in our neighborhood, um, we, we've got HOA and they want us to take out our trash cans on Mondays and put them back on Tuesdays. So all my neighbors know, if you are leaving and going, going away and you are not there on a Tuesday, I'll put back your trash cans for a little fee. No, I'm kidding. For free, Okay. I was thinking of charging them, but then, so, no, I'm kidding. So uh, serve them. They know it. So if they are away, I get a text. Will you please put my trash back? And I'm like, fine, sure, no problem. It's just those little things. One day you'll serve somebody, and they will say, because you served me, I want to know your God. If you serve people, you open up the door for them to come to Jesus. And that's what we want to do. So in two, three weeks time, I'm not sure exactly then. I just want to teach on Jesus. Who is Jesus to you? Just a prophet? A teacher? A good guy? A guy we read about in religion, in the Bible? So I want to do a whole teaching on who is Jesus because you journey the word with him. He makes the word come alive. His stories are amazing. It's the encounter with the Holy Spirit every time you get to Jesus. We need to surrender at the feet of the cross of Jesus, give our lives to him. We undergo baptism. Yes, looking forward to September 10, we're going to undergo baptism. And then we share our testimony about how we found Jesus, how we became from lost to open. So today we're going to go forward from open to volunteer your time to grow. And this is so crucial in the days we are living. Listen to this verse, Hosea 4 verse 6. Now you must concentrate. Listen to this verse. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Since you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. People, this is a, this is a terrible verse. Did you read that? Because we don't have knowledge, we will become destroyed. And I don't know about you, I, I don't know America for the last 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. I just listen to you guys speak. And everybody I talk to is like, America is not the same anymore. 
This is not the old America. This is not the America we grew up in. This is not the values we grew up with. This is not the way families operate. This is not the way churches operate. Everything has changed. I'm just thinking somewhere there's a lack of knowledge of God. And that is why we are getting destroyed. And the effect of the destroyed is your children. We are living in a time where school kids, elementary, middle, high school kids, are the most confused in the history of America about everything. From sexuality, everybody goes crazy. Oh, kids are so confused about this sexuality. They're confused about everything. Right. Why? Because maybe the parents got lazy and didn't grab after knowledge and didn't volunteer their time to grow. And because we didn't grow in the knowledge of God, what happened? We will get destroyed by the enemy. People, this is serious. Sorry, you know me. I'm always full of jokes and funny and happy. But when I got this verse, I was like, oh, Lord. Forgive me for the next maybe five minutes. We volunteer our, gro- our, our time to grow our bank accounts. But we don't volunteer our time to grow in Jesus. We volunteer our times to grow in sports, to get to the NFL, to become a basketball player. And I love my sports. But we don't teach our children to volunteer your time to grow in Jesus. And now we are getting destroyed. And we ask why. We ask why. Where's God? Why is this happening? Why teenage suicides? Why so many kids addicted to drugs? Why so many kids running off the rails with sexuality and confusedness and all of this? The reason is we volunteered our time for everything else except growing in Jesus. And we need to get it back because that is, <laughs> that is what we all want. We all want to learn and grow the will of God in our lives. We all want to understand my purpose and meaning. We all want to grow in how does it look to follow Jesus daily? How does it look to be a disciple of Jesus? How does it look to to influence my community? How does it look to teach your children how to read Bible and pray? And all of those basic things. We don't know the basics anymore because of a lack of knowledge. My people are being destroyed. And the effect of that is their children will be destroyed. So we, we're going to try with the Bible study on Thursday nights. We, we've got an online course training teaching you the seven rhythms of grace where each letter again means something. What does it mean to be born again? How to renew your mind, your own holiness, uh, the T for time and tithing and your talent. We've, we've got it all worked out. It's online and it will be ready for you and you can volunteer your time to grow. Question. For what will you volunteer your time? For what? Because you do have time. (laughs) You've got 24 hours a day, every one of us. And all of us make decisions with what will I do with that time? Scroll, play, Facebook, Instagram. How much time will I spend on TV and all of that? How much time on friends and family? How much time on sports? How much time on work and You decide somewhere now inside of you, you must make a decision. I will volunteer my time to grow in Bible knowledge, in Jesus knowledge. So so for me, I was thinking of illustration to illustrate it to you. Um, Me coming from South Africa. So in South Africa, I had a ranch and I love animals and I've worked with animals and I've done all of that. And I knew snakes in South Africa. So we've got like the black mamba. It's a very dangerous snake. If it bites you, you kind of like 30 minutes max, you're dead. Um, It's a very poisonous, venomous. What's the difference between poisonous and venomous? Don't worry, don't answer me, I don't have a clue. But it's a very venomous snake, okay? So coming to America, I didn't know. I lacked knowledge 
about venomous snakes in America. You know, not all over the world, all the snakes are the same. So two things can happen. Um, I found a snake in our garden when we lived in Round Rock. And my wife is like, a eh, snake. And everybody's like, eh, snake. And I'm like, let's kill it. So, <laughs> I, I mean, that's what my Bible says, you know, just smash the head. I mean, uh, it's somewhere in the Bible. So I didn't know the snake and I killed it. And I took it over to the neighbors and I'm like, look at this, dead snake. And the guy's like, shame, that was a poor rat snake. And I'm like, oh, sorry for him. So, so yeah, poor guy, don't mess in my garden. But in any case, the point is, if you don't know, you kill the wrong stuff. And if you don't know, you let your kids play with the wrong stuff. Without knowledge, I didn't know which snakes are poisonous and which snakes are not. Without knowledge, we let our kids go to places, do stuff which are wrong, and it will kill them. All the other way around, we don't let them do anything. <laughs> we kill all the snakes, okay? You know, it's me. You're not allowed to have any friends. <laughs> You don't go anywhere. My kid will not drive on 16 because have you seen these people drive in Texas? So I stop everything just because of a lack of knowledge. Now, you know what will happen if you stop your kids from doing everything. The day they go to college, they will do everything, okay? So, so even if you try to protect yourself without knowledge, you will destroy things. And maybe that's what happened in, in the old church. Because of a lack of knowledge, we said it's wrong to wear jeans or whatever. We, we said it's wrong for people to come with, with hats to church. We, we made a bunch of rules that were wrong because we didn't know God. So people, we, we at Rhythm of Grace, we're going to do our best. Tommy is going to do an amazing series on how to receive the Holy Spirit, how to live in the Holy Spirit. Get into knowledge as much as possible. And we, we are talking, we are working out how can we do more men's group? How can we do more training? How can we have small groups? How can we get knowledge to you so that you don't get destroyed? In your life. So step two, volunteer your time to grow, okay, to get knowledge. Step three, just quickly, volunteer. From volunteer, we go to engage. That is how to discover yourself. This one is very quickly. So I've worked out, we've worked out a program, a, a test where you can find your personality style. It's a disc test. We've got a gift test, what you can do to discover your top three main spiritual gifts that we think God has given you. And thirdly, we've got what we call a passion test. Now, it's not a marriage passion test, how much passion you've got in your marriage. Relax, okay? That's a joke, by the way. Um, <laughs> for that, you can buy a tablet I had lately. But in any case, so it's not a passion test for passion in world. It's what your What's your desire of your heart? Where do you want to be involved changing people's lives? Okay? So we're going to do that with you. We're going to help you. It's, a, it's like a 40-minute time with you where we're going to help you just discover your gifting, your personality, and your passion. And then fourthly, the fourth step, from engage to making a difference. And that's where we want to help you. We, we're going to call it something like uh, a dream team. Everybody that's somewhere involved at Rhythm of Grace, uh, teaching kids ministry, making coffee, whatever, being going out with food and give food to people. We've gonna go, we're going to do mission trips back to South Africa. Wherever you want to serve and make a difference in your community, we want to help you to do that. Okay, to get to that point, how you can bless your neighbor. So I want to end this quick series of just what we're going to do at Rhythm Church or Rhythm of Grace Church with a story of a gentleman where the four steps happened to him in one day, like this, quickly. Normally it takes longer, 
and I'm going to show it to you in Scripture. But we're going to go quickly to a story of Jesus healing, delivering a guy, and he takes him through the four steps like quickly, and he leaves him to change his community. So, everybody ready? We're going to end with a story. Let's do the story. It's in Luke 8, verse 22. It says, One day, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into the boat and, uh, and started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filled with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. So just background. Maybe you didn't know this, but if you ever um, get the opportunity to go to Israel, I've been there a few times. It's amazing to do the footsteps of Jesus, the Sea of Galilee and all of this. But you'll see all around the Sea of Galilee, I think it's only one town, Tiberias, where there's actually houses and homes and hotels on the lake, the Sea of Galilee. The rest, it's all countryside. Why? I mean, it's the most expensive realty you can find. Lake Travis, the house close to the water is the most expensive. Opposite in Israel. Why? The Jews didn't like water, <laughs> okay? Why? Because they couldn't swim. R true story, okay? They were drowning. They were afraid of water. So when Jesus said, let's go to the other side, they were all, no, we don't want to. Second, the other side meant pagan place. It was like, uh, let's call it, <laughs> I must behave in another country. Let, let's call it Vegas, okay? It's the Las Vegas of America, all right? There everything goes. You can even find pig there and bacon. You can eat that. Now, for a Jew, you know, Jews not allowed to eat bacon. But going over to the other side, you can find Bacon and gambling and girls and, okay, but just bacon, all right, just up there. So you go over. So they weren't excited about this. And the question was, Jesus, what do you want to go and do there? You've got nothing to lose. All the Jews are here. Here we are in Galilee. No Jews are living outside in the pagan city, but Jesus said, let's go. So they go. And on their way there, they get a storm. And all of them must be because we are doing the wrong thing. It's God punishing us <laughs> for going to Vegas. <laughs> Whenever you go to Vegas and you eat a storm, turn around, okay? So that's what they're thinking. We're going to the wrong place. And they wake Jesus up and he, he, and he talks to the storm and says, calm down, and it all calms down. So they get to the, another, uh, to the other side. Now listen to what happened at the other side. So they arrived in the region of Gerasas, Gerasenes, whatever. It's the Decapolis. That's, it's called the Ten Cities of the Decapolis or Decapolis or however you want to pronounce it, across the lake from Galilee. Now, as Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came out to meet him. I love this. Even a demon-possessed man knew the answer. <laughs> you need to go and meet him. And that's what you guys decided to do this morning. You had a decision. Will I go to church? Yes or no. Next Sunday, you're going to have that same decision. And the next, and the next, and the next. But if you decide, I will go out and meet with him, something good's about to happen. So a demon-possessed guy, it, it's fascinating for me how a demon-possessed guy even knew the answer. And we call it sane people and good people and intelligent people and we call them whatever, but they don't know the answer. It all starts, life change starts with going out to meet him. If you meet Jesus, life will change for you. If you go out, if you put the effort in, so this is what I see. This guy did one step, Jesus did 99 steps. He crossed the lake, went through a storm to meet one guy. This is very special. <laughs> 
He didn't go across the lake, move his disciples, went through a storm, and then he started a tent meeting and a revival and a million people showed up and it was, no, it was a South African going across the sea and he just meets one guy. And guess what? That's fine for Jesus. Because everything can start with one person. That's the value of one person. Um, me and Tommy were sharing vision when we had a meeting and, and he told me about somebody who came to the church, a new family and all of that. And I said to him, this is how it will happen. One life at a time. And he's like, that is, that is words for my soul. One life at a time. And, and it's a story. It's a Bible story. One life at a time. And maybe it's your life. <laughs> maybe you are the one guy or girl or family me and my family had to come all over the world to, have, to tour and to meet you. But you need to do one thing. Give that other one step. Jesus will do the 99. You just need to, to come and meet him. All right. So he came out and he met with Jesus. For a long time he had been homeless and naked, living in the tombs outside of the town. Now, now I'm going to shorten the story. First of all, I want to teach about demon possessed in Christianity and all of that, but I don't think it's a time now. One day we'll get to that because it's a real thing. There's an enemy out there, the devil, and he possesses people and his demons, his workers, they possess people and destroy people and kill people's lives. And the church needs to be able to discern about possession and bring deliverance to people. So that's a whole new teaching. We're not going to go there. But this story, so Jesus asked this demon guy, uh, what's your name? And he's like legions, meaning plenty. So this guy was full of, full of demons, not just one. He was like plenty of demons. And the next moment, they start begging Jesus, don't send us to the abyss, to hell, but send us into the pigs. Pigs meaning it's pagan place, okay? So there were many pigs. And Jesus said, okay, you can go into the pigs. And all the demons went into the pigs. The pigs went off, started running, run into the Sea of Galilee, drop off from a cliff. All of them died. And the herdsman of the pig, he turned around. He started going back to town to tell all the owners of the pigs what happened. And then eventually the owners of all the pigs came out to Jesus where he was and they begged him to leave because you're destroying our business here. What are you doing? Okay, we, we, I mean, pigs were meat, it's bacon and we love it and now they're all dead and we can't sell them. So what's going on here? Leave. Okay, they asked Jesus to leave and he said, okay. And then let's read the last verse. What's it? Verse 38. The man who had been freed from the demons begged to go with him. So he begged to come with Jesus. But Jesus sent him home saying, No, go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. So he went, uh, so he went all through the town proclaiming the great things Jesus had done for him. So quickly, there were three begs, two yeses and a no. Did you see that? So firstly, the demons begged Jesus to go into the pigs and Jesus said, yes. Secondly, the townspeople begged Jesus to leave them and he said, yes. And thirdly, a newborn Christian asked Jesus, can I stay with you? And he said, no. <laughs> Ain't that confusing? Come on, be honest. <laughs> it's like he says yes to demons. He said yes to people who doesn't want them in their lives. But he said no to a newborn Christian. Why is that? Because he wanted this guy. There are two reasons, but I'm just going to give you one. He wanted this guy to go back and start making a difference. He wants this guy, he took him all the way from step one to step four and say, go make a difference with your life. And, and if you go and read further in the book of Acts, you'll see Paul going into the Decapolis and he finds Christians there. 
Now, it was only Philip and Andrew. Sorry, I just, I'm studying the Bible. It's my job. So uh, it was only Philip and Andrew and this guy who ever went into the Decapolis. So how that there came churches about in that region when Paul arrived there? By this guy's testimony. Story in my mind. I'm playing this all the time. So Jesus saved this guy. This guy came out to Jesus, step one, and he met Jesus. And I'm like, where's the training? Where's the teaching? <laughs> I mean, you can't just leave a demon-possessed guy in charge of your missions project at your church, okay? <laughs> Brand new Christian coming in, pray for him, deliver him. Hallelujah, you set free. Now you go and plan a church. It sounds a little bit crazy to me, Okay. As I was thinking, the Holy Spirit slowly said, wait, you read the Bible in your brain, quickly, old-fashioned, go back in Jesus' time. So when Jesus said to the demons, they can go into the pigs, this guy was delivered right here, bang. All the pigs went into, all the demons went into the pigs, and the pigs went into the water, and the owner or the, or the, the guy taking care of them he saw this thing happening. He turned around and he went back to the city. What happened between Jesus and this guy? Training, teaching, talking. And as that guy was going back to the city, maybe a half an hour, maybe 40 minutes, remember, no cell phones. He didn't phone quickly the owners and said, hey, the pigs are dead, you know, come over. He had to walk there. Okay, now he gets into town, and I don't know about you, but people are stubborn. And he's like, to all the owners, your pigs are dead. And they're like, what? Your pigs have drowned. Well, pigs don't go for a swim. What are you talking about? And he's like, no, all your pigs ran over the cliff because they became demon-possessed. And they're like, what? Are you crazy? Do you listen to yourself? And they're like, no, you need to come and see. And the people are, oh, man, you're crazy. Go back and work, you know? So it took him time to convince them that their pigs are dead, okay? So all the owners, it was more than one owner, he had convinced more than two, three. Eventually, they rally up all the people. It takes time. And now all of them came out walking. So this is just my suggestion. I give him three hours at least. At least. One hour to get there. One hour to convince everybody. One hour to come back. This guy was sitting in a Bible study for three hours. Jesus was giving him step two and step three in a quick rush method. So that's why I'm saying four steps in one day for this guy. He started out demon possessed. He got and found Jesus. Then Jesus, he volunteered and grew. And then Jesus helped him to discover himself. And then when he wants to stay with Jesus, because it's amazing with Jesus, let's be honest, okay? If you've been set free, if you just study, start studying the Bible and the stories and the history, everything is amazing. I just love it. And you worship and you sing and it's all so good. And then you discover yourself and your giftings and it's so great. I just want to do this, do this, stay here. It's lovely. Then Jesus is like, now go. And he's like, I want to go with you, Jesus. And Jesus is like, no, you ready to go and preach because I've just invested three hours of Bible study in your life. Go and make a difference. People, I think we are more ready than what we want to be honest with. <laughs> Some of you guys have been coming to church for years, for years. And you still haven't decided to get up and go. Go to your neighbors. Go to hospital. Go to welfare. Go, go to volunteer anywhere and start making a difference with your life. Step four. If you really feel, well, I'm not ready, we'll be ready for you to help you with step two and step three. But I promise, I honestly think... <laughs> We are more ready than what we think. Were you demon-possessed before you came in here? Were you running naked between the tombs like this guy? 
maybe you were a little bit screwed up. I get it. But I, some of you, I don't want to picture naked. But in any case, let's just carry on. Um, but, but I believe if you found Jesus, he has invested in your life already enough for you to go out and start blessing people. Start to pray for them by name. Start to listen to them. Start to eat with them. Start to serve and support them. And start to share your story and invite them to church. This is not about numbers, people. But numbers, listen to this. Numbers count. Have you seen in the Bible everywhere, Jesus, the Bible, gives us a number. Three days, seven days, two people, five people. Because every number is a human being. We are 40 people in the church right now. If we start doing this, we can be 80 people within two weeks. Now listen again, it's not about numbers. But 80 people means 40 people are going to heaven. 80 means 80 people are going to heaven. I don't know if you get that. It's about heaven and hell. And numbers count when it gets to heaven and hell. So it's not about the ego of me and the pastor. It says, oh, we want a big church. We had big churches. We don't care about the numbers. We care about the individuals that's living, your neighbors, your friends. And guess what? Maybe if they die today, they're going to wake up in hell. And it's on me and you. To bless them. That's why Jesus said to this guy, Sorry, my friend, don't get into my boat. Go out and talk to these people that just said, I must leave. Go and tell them your story. You were demon possessed, and I've set you free. And then you start telling them about all the stuff we talked about. For three hours. And this guy did step one to four in one day. (laughs) And he changed people's life. Now, we're going to stop because I can just carry on. Uh, Because he took the disciples on a three-year journey of finding him, teaching them, discovering themselves. And then as he was ascending up into heaven, he sent them to go. They had a three-year journey. I don't know the length of your journey. All I know is God's plan for your life is step one, step two, step three, step four. Let's stop here. Maybe this morning it's just step one for you. You need to do what that demon-possessed guy did. When Jesus landed, he came to him. Have you made that decision yet in your life? Have you made that decision to come to Jesus with all your hurt, with all your pain, with all your hurts of the past, all your diseases, just come to him. As Tommy is playing on the piano, I just want to give you maybe, I don't know, 20 seconds to think of at which step are you in the life you've always wanted The life you've always wanted is to know God, to find freedom, to discover yourself, and to make a difference. Where are you? And let's just make this decision one step at a time. Lord, I'm ready to know you. Like this demon-possessed man, I will give one step. You have given 99 steps to get to me but I will give this one step this morning. Maybe you've done that. And today it's time for step two. Volunteer your time to grow. Get an online course, get a Bible app, get a a come to the Bible study, join a small group, a Bible study group. Volunteer your time to grow. Remember, without knowledge, we are getting destroyed by the enemy. Remember that point. Maybe that's your next step now. Maybe step three, discover yourself. What's your gift, purpose, 
What's the way you're going to do things, your calling, your personality style, or maybe step four. Just start getting up and bless people. Go. Here's Jesus. Lord, you will show me my next step. And you will help everybody here to, to clearly see themselves with you. Can I ask you to imagine yourself next to the lake, like Austin, like Travis, doesn't matter, and a boat coming up, and Jesus is in that boat. And he's like, will you come to me? That's your first step. Make the decision. I will come to Jesus. And then, Jesus, I want to be healed. I want to be set free. Jesus, help me with my addictions. Help me with my pain and my issues and my baggage. Jesus, help me. That's all we cry out right now. Jesus, help me. I've been hurt. All of a sudden, I feel there are people in this room that's been hurt. And you've never told anybody about it because you are ashamed of what happened. You don't need to tell anybody, just tell Jesus. And He can heal you in a second. He can deliver you of that baggage you're carrying, that issues that's in your life because of that hurt. You can find freedom today. And then you say, Lord, I want to volunteer to grow. Volunteer. If we don't volunteer to grow, we can never go. So right now, we want to volunteer to grow, Lord. Give you my time for Bible study, for prayer, for devotion, for small group, for something. You need to do something to grow. That's your next step. Lord, help us discover who we are, who you made us. Lord, help me discover my my strength and my weaknesses. Lord, help me discover my giftings, the Holy Spirit giftings you've given me. Lord, help me discover my passions, where you want me to be involved in and things I need to change in this world. And then lastly, Lord, help us to make a difference with our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that right now you are helping people to get a vision how to bless their neighbors and friends yes Lord we are praying for people by name we are engaging with people we are listening to people and we're ready to serve people so that we can share with them the goodness of Jesus just like this man did he went back into his town and started starting to tell everybody what Jesus has done for him Thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Um, Tommy, is it okay if I bless the people? Sure. All right. Let's stand and uh, let's speak a blessing over you guys for the coming week. Um, before we speak the blessing, I think we all pray for Hawaii, uh, Maui, the island with the fires there. Uh, I saw this morning, it's close to 100 people already, uh, bodies they found. Just think of all the families, just think of the devastation that's going on there. So we pray for that. We pray for our pastor, Tommy and Cindy, their grandson, Remington. Um, we believe for complete healing in Remington's body. So we pray for that. And yeah, let's not just be talkers. When we say we begin to pray this week, we will begin to pray for people by name. Receive the blessing. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May you bless these people with, with obedient hearts. Let us not just be hearers of your word, but let us go and be doers of your word. 
Let us be obedient this, word, this week by blessing people all around us. Father, thank you that you are protecting our friends and family. Thank you that your hand is upon us. We pray for the children this week that start school. We pray for all the ISDs and we pray for Lake Travis ISD for an uh, outpouring of your spirit for revival to break out in Lake Travis ISD and you will protect our kids and we will grow in knowledge and that will sustain us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.